In our last video, cosmic roots and earthly roots, I left some areas open that I was criticized for by one Francis Clock, who's a writer on Rotherain.com. I'm going to clarify those points that Mr. Clock felt I didn't cover. You remember this plant from a couple weeks ago underneath our tomato igloo. I'm going to take the tomato igloo off. You see how well it's grown. Now in the last video, I explained that all plants are systems of forces from the heavenly bodies in conjunction with the earth. For instance, Mars makes the reds, Jupiter makes the yellows and whites, Saturn makes the blues and purples, etc. All the planets have gravitational forces and magnetic currents, and these forces interact with the Earth. It's only common sense to realize that these forces are going to affect all life on Earth, not just plant growth. We're just using biodynamics to demonstrate these forces. It's the easiest way to hook up the Earth with the entire universe and realize we're all part of one whole. And until science regains its common sense and realizes these atmospheric pressures come from the entire universe, we're still going to have problems as far as seed making goes and all aspects of planetary life. If we utilize these forces correctly, the Earth could be a much better place. Now, this is the earthly root. This goes in the ground. We cut our plant down and we bury it up to here. This one was once done that way. We, I don't know if we videoed it, or just putting that one in the ground or not. I don't believe so. I said in the last video that every aspect of the planet is affected by earthly forces in conjunction with the heavenly forces. Now, I mentioned metallurgy and baking bread, but these forces, these forces that are intermingling with this plant right now have other aspects to them. Other sciences can utilize these forces. Architecture, art, astrophysics, all these forces intertwine. And if you just take one plant, this tomato plant right here, and study how these forces work, you'll get valuable keys, we'll get valuable keys to all the other sciences, biology, chemistry, architecture, you name a science, medicine, and it will be affected one way or the other, positively or negatively, by all the heavenly forces intermingling. And just as this plant is a system of forces, so every science on this planet is affected by these forces. Earthly root, heavenly root. The earthly root goes in the ground. The top of the plant becomes the heavenly root or circuit to absorb these forces. You've all experienced, those of you who have gardened and farmed, plants getting frosted out. And if you look closely at them, after the frost, you'll know if they're alive or not. Doesn't matter if all these outer leaves are burnt down, as long as the heavenly root is still alive. If there's a little bit of green in the heavenly root, the plant will live. Now we're going to take it one step farther. What are these heavenly or cosmic forces that are in the Earth's environment that affect us? Again, Mr. Clark mentioned that I should mention this to you. What are the stars and planets? Well, the stars and planets themselves, in biodynamics we know, are in what we call angelic hierarchies. They're the demarcation points in space where there are spiritual colonies of angels. And it is the angels that create these gravitational and magnetic currents for us. 
In biodynamics, we know there is an angelic being behind each plant species. We call them group souls. In other words, for a cucumber, there would be one, it's not exactly accurate, but it's an easy way to explain it, one angelic being creates the cucumbers on the planet, is responsible for that species. Tomatoes, another type of angelic being. Carrots, another. Beets, another. Wherever we go, wherever we find these invisible forces like gravity, magnetism, electricity, we can see electricity, some of it anyway, we're always dealing with spiritual beings as the architects of life on the planet Earth. Did I forget anything gorgeous?